Radio Shack, a corporation founded in Boston, Massachusetts in 1921, currently operates 4,486 stores throughout the United States, Mexico, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. Throughout their history, Radio Shack gained the reputation for selling its own brand of quirky robotics, specialty wires, and batteries for high-tech home projects. However, in the year 2012, Radio Shack is in the midst of rebranding itself. In 2009, they began selling the Apple iPhone, and in 2011, they introduced Verizon as their newest wireless option for customers. With that, Radio Shack customers were now able to purchase the most advanced smartphones and use them on the top three wireless carriers in the US. However, things still aren't going well for Radio Shack financially. They've shown an overall decrease in their share value over the last decade, though there have been a few high points. Focusing on the last 12 months indicates no growth in value either. In fact, it indicates a slow and steady decline. But why? CEO James Gooch submits that Radio Shack is in a transition phase. They've severed ties with T-Mobile and signed on with Verizon, as well as relocated many of their in-store kiosks from Sam's Club to Target. In addition, expanding into international markets such as Mexico hasn't been overwhelmingly successful either. Radio Shack missed their mark of new stores they intended to have open by 50% at the end of 2011. One problem that appears evident is consumer awareness. Radio Shack has had difficulty informing the public that they've shifted their focus to the wireless platform. A lot of customers don't think of them when they want an iPhone. They think they still specialize in batteries. The rise of Walmart in the consumer electronics industry has not impacted Radio Shack favorably either. It's reinforced the big box business model and implicated that stores like Best Buy are better suited to lead the industry. In comparison to their competitors, Radio Shack's liquidity is good. They have $1.57 of assets to every dollar of debt. Walmart and Best Buy both lag behind in this category. Radio Shack also displays a competitive leverage ratio, indicating a debt to shareholders equity of 83%. This is competitive with Walmart's and well beyond that of Best Buy's. Radio Shack's share value do start to indicate some financial concern, however. The company's stock is generating a 12.7% rate of return, well below that of its competitors. Being viewed as a financial risk to investors could doom Radio Shack down the road. Unfortunately, Radio Shack's ability to turn product into profit is lower than that of its competitors as well. Their activity ratio may be the most crucial indicator of financial health for a firm in the consumer electronics business. The truth is that even if their activity rate were to improve, the sales figures don't lie. Walmart and Best Buy Superstores offer so many more products and services that Radio Shack can't match that in 2011, you see that the two firms sold close to 50 and 100 times more than Radio Shack did respectively. Despite intrinsic flaws with their business model and the state of the consumer electronics industry, Radio Shack's website is not even a neutralizer. For instance, they make their customers come into the store to order an iPhone 4S instead of giving them the option to do so online. Though Radio Shack saw their assets grow every quarter of last year, the Verizon transition has also cost the company an awful lot as well. Though over time it will stabilize and Verizon will make Radio Shack more profitable, the timetable on that return is uncertain. In fact, the entire future is uncertain for Radio Shack. They are clearly outmatched by Walmart and Best Buy in this changing industry, and despite their efforts, their company may not turn around fast enough before a major competitor buys them out. In light of this, I would not advise investing in Radio Shack as their future may turn out to be virtual insanity.